Hi, Sports to Paul here. Now we're looking at Bobcad for SolidWorks. Bobcad Cam for SolidWorks. Runs inside SolidWorks Gold Partner. Uh, I made some parts. Today we're going to look at doing a chamfer, 2D and 3D chamfers. So let's get up to SolidWorks. Here we are. It's that same test part we did episode 1, 2, 3, 4, and all these different cam packages we're looking at. My buddy Dave Rui made it. Uh, the window here, come on, do that. This one's Rui test, Dave Rui, my buddy, machinist buddy, engineer. He uh, made this Bobcad chamfer solid part. So uh, the workpiece is that the stock is same stock. Top setup, the part zero here, the way it sits in my machine like this. So doing chamfers, rather than do them real time, because I had enough trouble with it, and not because of anything wrong with Bobcat, because I'm not used to all this. So let's do, it's, it's already done, I'm just gonna go over what I finally figured out. Now I try to do it like solid cam, where you can pick this top chamfer up here, and you can pick this lower chamfer down here, you can highlight both those as separate chains is what they, jargon in, in solid cam and master cam and say I want to do a multi-level 2d operation and it'll do the top and I couldn't do that you could there was some way I kicked this thing into all it ended up was making two operations here which I've renamed now champ for high champ for low and so to do it I would just bite the bullet and do them separately doing 2d chamfers on two different levels so Chamfer high, let's unblank the tool path. Where is it? Unblank. It wasn't too hard to get around. I've learned after all this time, I'm finally getting the, the paradigm, if you will, of Bobcat. Unlike SolidWorks Cam by CamWorks, it has a feature tree and an operations tree, and you're never sure where you are, and you're never sure which features have generated which operations, but you can move the operations around. Bobcat is kind of similar in that this is a chamfer high feature, really, that has a geometry. But then here is the actual operation, the chamfer mill operation, where this really pays off. And one of the things I think Bobcat does great is in this drilling where one geometry for these five drills on the bottom, here they are, and then you can do three, four different things. You do four different things. You could center drill, drill, chamfer drill, and tap. Whereas in solid cam, you just had to do four separate operations if you wanted to do it. So this little distinction can help. It depends on the kind of parts, right? Whether people fall in love with one way or another. I kind of like linear stuff, whereas just show, let me, I want to think in terms of operations and do it one after the other. But here's chamfer high which is just around here, this outside edge around here. 2D, so we'll go here and go edit. And the feature, okay, it defines a feature. Zero, zero, it's interesting. Machining strategy, this is where, you know, if you wanted to have this one thing I've called the chamfer high to do 10 different things, you could start loading them in here. You know, you can do two different, but the same against that same geometry, right? Tabs, we don't want to leave tabs on this. That's for cutting parts out. Posting, not important to us. Blank, and you can use this next to do what I'm doing. Just go down. Chamfer mill, it's 50 thousandths. I used a big one here. This was just default, right? They're trying to help you. There's places where you don't really expect patterns. Left, I want to... Uh, climb mill this, which is left, but then I learned something about that I'll show you in a second. Parameters. It knows it's a chamfer, so 20 thousandths is the cutter position, and I think that's saying how far down. Small diameter, chamfer angle. I or, No, here, here's the depth. Chamfer depth, 10 thousandths. So every company wants to do chamfers different. Plunge in, single depth, you know, and this is single depth of like, well, if you want to do multiple, I got confused here thinking I could do two completely different chamfers. No, it's like if you got a really wide chamfer and you got to do multiple passes because your tool isn't wide enough. 
corner types sharp i think it's important to highlight all of these even though none of these turned out to be very important and then here's the tool path you can see it's set down and that big tool that we picked it, it all makes sense and then let me show you something because after all this using chamfer high default chain start point see the arrows so now we're back to like the master cam solid cam the geometries have arrows it's just they don't have it intrinsic when you pick the geometry in bobcad you got to understand to go here and here's where you can right click and say oh reverse the direction and between that and left you finally figure out okay if i start here and it goes in this direction and i'm on the left side where you want the chamfer to be and it's rotating clockwise then looking down you know through the spindle if it's rotating clockwise then i'm doing climb milling so you get that figured out so it goes around here i, I haven't found a way to simulate just one tool path it, the simulator just seems to grab the whole part and you got to put up with that same simulator uh, master cam has okay let's hide this tool path blank let's go look at chamfer low unblank this one so chamfer low okay I see i've clicked on this oh god it's so confusing here we go here's chamfer low i used a different tool so it's much closer and just like with solid cam the headache with this chamfer low is if you just pick the line as geometry it runs the tool here and it'll do a little gouge especially a big tool the smaller the tool the smaller the gouge right so i've you'll see i have a one eighth inch tool which might be ridiculous but in my avid benchtop pro i got a twenty-four thousand rpm spindle so a little tiny tool i can spin it fast enough to probably get some material removal even at that tiny radial offset but you can see i've stopped the geometry here now solid cam much more expensive it lets you pick geometry point to point so you can just say point here and then pick this point here and you've pulled back that geometry for bobcad it ended up just being bite the bullet and go here and do what i call a, the chamfer kludge sketch it's hidden I guess I could show you where is it it's not suppressed it's hidden here so there's the sketch let's hide it and I just kept playing around shortening it it got tricky when when I went I, I change where the, these points ended and SolidWorks is great because I mean, when you're moving this point it sends a blue line across to tell you okay you're the exact same distance from the corner when I go back into Bobcad up here it would give a hey you know something's changed Regen it doesn't say regenerate tool pass it's like redo something and i didn't do it i thought when you did do it it would regenerate the tool path it didn't and i kept going in circles how come it's not moving so i found the best thing to do is if, if i said no don't you know change change operations or whatever the thing was then it would switch uh to the other side and it would it would start carving out the part so i learned the best thing to do is say yeah re-update but then you also have to explicitly go and say compute tool paths so then you can get this one here and you'll see it's pulled back just far enough so the tool doesn't gouge this surface up here and you do that by by working on the very tip of the tool and having a small diameter tool that seems to work best maybe you should be all the way up on the tool i don't know i'll let the real machinists down in the comments figure this out so that's chamfer low oh let's go over it just just so if you're trying to duplicate this feature i think all of this was defaulted the top of the feature is down here i may have put the depth and see this is me just flailing because it's not clear to me how to do something as simple as a chamfer once again, chamfer mill, tabs, we don't care about tabs, posting, we don't care. This is blank. This one, see, here's where I made it an eighth inch. Excuse me. I made it an eighth inch. Patterns left because I want climb milling. This stuff, 20 thousandths. So on an eighth inch end mill, you know, I maybe should have made that 10 thousandths. Because I think they're telling me that this is that distance there. Hard to say sharp tool rather than these blunt tools so i did that so it goes all the way down chamfer depth same thing ten thousandths 
then. Leads didn't mess with it. Corner types didn't mess with it. Machine sequence didn't mess with it. Feed rates. Okay, so we'll cancel out of that. So that's fine, but then how do you do it? I, I looked in there 3D tool paths. Let's blank this. Now we're going to unblank the 3D chamfer. Unblank. And I did two. I, I chamfered 3D all the way around the outer, and I chamfered all the way around the inner. And at first, I, what I tried, what I, the first place I went was mill axis, three axis, and tried and tried, you know, and that's all the module works, kind of 3D tool path, mold making stuff. Turned out that you're supposed to do insert mill three axis wireframe. And that's kind of like the 3D contour that Solid Cam had. So that's what this started life as. And then I changed the name, Chamfer 3D. Let's go look at that. So this one's blessfully simple. The feature is the feature. I don't think I changed any of this. You know, these are just clearance and rapid planes. The strategy, this is where 3D engrave rough. And you're not allowed, allowed to, do, you know, finish a rough. I figure, oh, I'm gonna do rough. Posting didn't matter. The mill, this one, I think I used the same mill as in that lower one, right? A 125. Does it give us a place for sharp? No. See, this is like solid cam. Every dialog box is a little different. High speed seal, I don't want that. So here's the tool. The parameters are pretty basic. Number of cuts. Now, how come it's not 10,000? Because this was the trick. And this is something cool, right? You got 10,000s here and you got 10,000s here with the 2D transfers. If you say 10,000s here, this chamfer on this slope becomes wider. Because if you just think about a sloped edge and that, that cone of, of the tool intersecting, you can kind of see. If it's flat, it, it's less of a cut. When it's sloped like this, you're deeper in that tool and it makes it wider. So my goal was to play around and I just, you know, try six, try nine, try 10, try five. By setting it to six, that was a secret. Uh, nothing else cut from geometry, I guess. All this stuff worked. Cancel. And so that's how we did that. Now, I left the operation, the 3D operation, going all the way around, which is silly because it's going to be an air everywhere but here because it's a 6,000th chamfer instead of a, a 10. I just felt after those crashes we had in, in the uh, fixturing one, I said, let's just take a win for a win. And now, I guess maybe hide blank the tool pass again. A little spaced out today because I'm doing this different. I'm not doing it as we go. Then, then, because I did get burned, I think it's already saved. This is telling you, you're not going to see these tool paths if you have a paid for working Bobcat. The tool pass will only show up in a demo Bobcat, which you can download and get for free, you know, so up to you. So then do the simulator. I'm not too keen on the simulator, but there's some interesting things I learned where it'll patch stuff up. And we're just going to go to fast forward. Let's just do it, right? Tool path visibility, turn off the tool pass. So now the places we want to look. Oh, okay. See, there's one thing I dislike about this. Now the, the pan and roll, it's not what SolidWorks uses because this is just cobbled in from the standalone Bobcad. It's your left finger that does this. And what I prefer to SolidWorks, your right finger does panning. So, okay, this finger, let's see what we want to do. Let's look at this one, pan this up here, zoom in. Now watch as we close in. Okay, this is what I learned. Let's see if it does it down here. Okay, watch as I close in. You'll see something appear down here. It should be if it's working. Yeah, see, automatic quality improvement view area. And it changed, right? It improved and got more accurate. It's kind of comforting, yet also kind of disturbing. Also kind of disturbing that I didn't quite get this right. But that's another operation. I'll show you the things I improved about this part after doing master cam and solid cam. But you can see by having 6,000th, on this 3D chamfer, it kind of matches the 10,000th chamfer in this 2D chamfer. And then up here, you know, we pulled back in time so that we didn't gouge and maybe 6.5 you know, thousandths 
would have gotten it even a little closer. But once again, this distance and this distance up here are similar. And then to show you the whole effect, I left, I, I added, let's do the chamfer on the inside. I was surprised I could figure it out at the same time. And it may be how you pick the lines to add, where you, which end of the line you pick and which direction you start picking them. Because it just so happened that when you go to change directions on these, both chains change at the same time. So if, if you're on the inside on one, on the wrong side on one, but on the right on the other, sorry, you, you're not going to be able to fix that. So here you can see like a similar, come on, here we go. Here you can see, and it's a little narrower here, and it's a little wider here, right? And it gets fatter here. So that's showing, but let's face it, if you're just trying to deburr and don't really care that every chamfer is identical, that's pretty sweet, 3D wireframe. So it left a nice chamfer, took the burrs out. Obviously the bottom is, is pretty trivial, it's just square. So doing that once it's flipped over and that's set up. And that might be one of those things you can copy and paste the, the, the thing over. I kind of, you know, they're all, everybody's big on, oh, and you copy and paste or you duplicate the last, like solid cam. I like explicitly doing each one separate, like right in software. You know, I like doing everything one at a time, because really all these programs are, they're like pseudocode for G-code. And what they call a feature is just a block of G-code. So up to you how, you how you like to save time or not save. Usually when you save time on the front, something breaks or costs you time when you're cutting metal. So that's that. Chamfers went pretty straightforward. Can do 2D chamfers, can do 3D chamfers. A little clicking around, but I got there. I right? took an hour or whatever to get there. Uh, and then what? Okay, I want to show you the improvements I made. That's a chamfering episode. The, this part started as the episode part four finish part, and it's now called, uh, I'll put it up as part five, because I did improvements on it based on what I learned from my buddy showing me how he would do it in Mastercam. Uh, deep pocket, nothing changed. Facing, perimeter, that shallow pocket here. I had a sketch here in order to get around this, you know, if you just pick this face, then then Bobcad would stop their tool pass here and they would stop their tool pass here and they kind of got away with it as opposed to most companies actually run the tool on this arc. So, uh, Bobcad was smart enough to say, well, there's air there. I'm just going to not cut. I'm going to stop. I'm going to give up. Stop cutting which worked out here, you know, it didn't leave any excess stock like the other programs when you were doing this face, but where it gave up here because it stopped here and it stopped here, it left a little scallop up there. So what my buddy showed me in, in Mastercam, and it works in this one as well, close this. What are we gonna show you? Sha shallow pocket reselect, is this gonna show you? These edges, what if I go here and do so, select all here, 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 here. Is it showing me anything? It's not. Well, let's get out of this. Let's just highlight shallow pocket. Let's stocks blank. Why? Is, oh, I'm still in the simulator. Sorry, folks. This has been a constant problem. OK, now we're draining the swamp again. As opposed to the pocket, see now the, the, the buttons work different because you're not in the simulator, you're back in solid cam. What Dave showed me is you just start picking edges and, and if you're in solid cam, it helps you project them. In, uh, in uh, solid works, you can select tangency and it, it does, you know, most of them. Come down here, come down here. And then what was so clever, you go down this line, you pick this little short line, you come back up this line, this arc here, 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 down here, over to here, then up here, and then back on track to close, close the loop. And I, it might be solid. One of the companies did not like multi-planar kind of geometry. Bobcad's fine with it. Solid Cam's fine with it. Oops, I don't know what I'm doing, but that ain't good. So... That was 
a trick that eliminated a sketch. So I thought that was cool. The flat, I was doing the flat all wrong because I'm an idiot, right? I'm not a machinist. I was doing it as a pocket and complaining, it's plunging into the material. Dave's like, no, 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 you just do a contour. And you set the contour to have enough. Let's turn on the tool pass. You can see what's going on, blank on blank. I mean, you, you, but, but you can't like make the contour of these edges here going across, it, 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 ugly. And when Dave had to do this in Mastercam, I knew I'd have to do it. There's a sketch here that, uh, here, see, just a single line. You know, you start, you, you coincide in here, you draw it a little longer along this groove, then come back, take the relationship of coincidency off of this point, and then you can drag it out. So you're getting the tool all the way out. Might not even be necessary. You know, you might be able to extend these tool paths anyway. Solid cam, they had that point to point business where you could just say, I want to go from this point to this point, and it drew the line for you. So no sketch needed in solid cam. That's a big plus. The, what their help guy said, if you're drawing sketches, you're doing something wrong. They intended to have all that capability there. So this, in, instead of a, drawing a square and doing a pocket, duh, do a contour and do it like that. What do they call it? Profile, rough profile. Profile. Because what? Profiles are 2D. Contours are 3D, at least if you can believe solid cam. Hide the tool path. Okay, the, the last thing that this part's improved in, I was, to do these slopes here and here, I was switching to a ball mill and going across. Dave, the guy who designed this part to trip up cam system, says, no, 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 no. You don't switch from a quarter inch flat mill to a quarter inch ball mill. You leave the quarter inch flat mill, but instead of going across, you come down on it. And in master cam and solid cam, it comes all the way down to this point. It makes a perfect, perfect edge. Bobcad, I had to fool it. Where are we? We're on slopes improved. It's advanced. I had to use advanced planer because you can say, oh, I want to do, oh, it's blanked, but you light it up. Okay, that's good to know for demonstration purposes. By saying, I think 3D extents, edit. Where is it? Parameters, no, options. 3D extents right here. That's when it went all the way down. What Visual uh, Mill does, Visual Cam Mill package for SolidWorks, it'll run this mill down until the center of the quarter inch end mill gets to this boundary of this face, and then it stops. And then you could, well, you could select this face, but then it got, it rasters over this whole surface. I don't know how, you know, I ended up drawing a tiny little sketch here in order to get that tool to go all the way down. Bobcad has that 3D extents. It's still a little clumsy, and that might be putting a little gouge here. I'm not sure. It was at one point in time. Something was. So that's that. So then we added our chamfers, face bottom. This is untouched otherwise. So this part, uh, without any of this chamfer business, will be, let me look, uh, Rui test part Bobcad, Bobcam-5. It'll be on the website down in the description. You can go to my website, download that, as well as this guy, download this. So once again, let's, uh, for dr drama's sake, do a simulation. And I guess this would be a pretty good view, huh? Right about there. Visibility, knock the tool pass off. Go fairly fast. Let's go right about there. We'll see. Run. I'm pretty sure you can you can do pocketing or you know you can close in. You don't have to zigzag on the facing. Now it's doing the profile. Profile. Now it's doing the deep pocket. Well, that's something else I'm going to show you when we get on. That's how you order the tools. Because having stuff underneath, you know, a feature where it's got drills. What if you got three different sets of drills? So you center drill. You don't want to center drill three holes, then, then drill them in that, and then go back and pick up the center drill again and do a different set of holes. So I'll show you where to fix that. It wasn't too hard to find. It wasn't too hard to figure out. And it's one of those things you can almost guess. There's a shallow. Now it's doing the profile. Now, here's the uh, rather entertaining 
slopes and they, they come out perfect. I was surprised it's not going all the way to the floor. That, that concerned me why it's leaving. See, there's hardly any step here. Maybe that something else went wrong. I don't know. And I said this 10,000 step over, right? 0.01. So it's, it's doing very fine step overs. Now it's going to come and do this one. And there may be, but you know, you might want to rough it a little instead of this big corner chunk. Yeah, see, so you put a little gouge there. So that's more work. I, I had it happen once before. I couldn't get rid of the gouge. And what's disturbing is you do a gouge report uh, because they got this verification business. It doesn't call it out as a gouge, although you can see it. So then this goes about 25 minutes. I'll show you that one thing where you order the tools. I think it's in, I can't remember where it is. I'll show you. Like I'm so turned around doing five, six different CAD cam packages in SolidWorks. There's our chamfers, zip, zip. Here's the inner one. Okay, now we're on the bottom of the part. Bam, bam, bam. We're going to face the four tenths of an inch where we were holding it in the vise. Now we're holding the part itself in the vise. One more. Bang, bam, bam. Center drills, drills, chamfers, taps. And I'm pretty sure they do the order in the order you pick them. And if you use the same, it'll do the same. So, okay, that was fun get out of here. Let's see if I can r remind myself. I believe it's milling job. Might be a setup. It's not too hard to find top setup. It's something like operation order operation. Back to milling job. Oh, here it is machining order. So this is like Titan TV where you're moving channels around where you can highlight it and say, oh, I want to do this before that. If you use different, you know, if you have a finish, I'm using the same tool for all this finish rough. I don't care. But if you had a cob mill to do roughing, here's where you could say, no, I want all the roughing to be done as one because I, I won't, I don't want to do a tool change every time between I go out and rough and a finish. Same thing down here. If you had different groups of holes, you could move stuff around here. So that's how Bobcad Cam deals with clustering similar tools together. So that's that. We might look at some 3D stuff. We're finishing up with Bobcad. I'll do maybe one of those this part fast as I can, like I did with Solid Cam. I got it done in 23 minutes. This will take longer because I got to do those couple sketches. But, you know, how much longer? That's the thing, you know, people are so passionate about, oh, my package is better than your package. I think it's just, you know, like Stockholm Syndrome. You're so used to it and have been abused by it for so long, you, you defend it. I don't think it's going to be much more than a minute's difference. We'll see. Of course, I've been through it and I know what to do now. All right. So that's chamfers, 2D, 3D. Let's light one up on the way out. The 3D chamfer. That'll be pretty. Okay. Sportster Paul, thanks for watching. Next time we'll have more stuff for Bobcad and then maybe go back to Visual Mill, see what they're about. Get a big comprehensive study of all these different cam packages. All right. Catch you next time. Mm -hmm.